Hey, and welcome back to the video tech sheet series from Matrix Brand Car Refinishes. We're going to cover speed today. Speed is our friend. Speed can make us productive, but we got to watch reducers, hardener selections, and this will help with that. So, without further ado, I know it's an old joke that watching paint dry is boring as heck, but if you think about what goes on when paint dries, it's actually kind of complicated. We throw this stuff through the air and it hits the panel, and during that first couple of minutes, we want the metallic flakes to orient properly, we want them to sink in the film, and we want the tint package, that is all the colorants that make up that color, to come up and sit on top of the metal flakes. That way we can make a silver, like most of the metallics are, into a blue metallic or a green or a red, etc. So if it is not oriented properly within the film itself, we're going to get all kinds of freaky things with the metallic and the pearl. We'll get colors that are gray and blotchy and streaky. So we want that flash time to take place. With that in mind, look at the different speeds that we have. We have fast and we have slow, but really they're to adjust the dry time within a given temperature range or a job size. So fast doesn't necessarily mean you're going to make more money. Fast means that it's going to get you the same dry time, maybe five to ten minutes between coats, at a cooler temperature or on a smaller job. Now on a bigger job and a hotter temperature where the material tends to go off faster, you need a slower mix. That will allow the paint film to stay open. So the fastest thing, the best thing for metallic control, the best thing for orientation is going to be the appropriate speed reducer at a given job size and temperature. To that end, here's a scale that shows you approximately what one might want to choose for a given job size or a temperature. Now, the larger job size, like in this case, you got maybe 10 panels, but a school bus at 100 plus degrees, that's going to be a tough job no matter what you do. Try to, you know, maintain, uh, you know, spraying at a cooler time of day or something like that. Then again, on the other side of the spectrum, a really fast thing like a rear view mirror, maybe a bumper off a car or something, you can go ahead and use a faster solvent at a little bit higher temperature than the range would indicate because you're still only going to be spraying for about a minute or so and it'll have the opportunity to orient properly and smooth out. All the same things are true with the low VOC areas, except for this time we're going to be using the MBR reducers. That would be 100 through 400, and they're roughly the same distance apart as the MR reducers for higher VOC areas. However, there's only four of them. So the range is going to be slightly different, and overall as a group, you got to pick them a little bit more carefully. So you can see here that they have a wider range for some of them, but they are exempt, so as a whole, they're going to be a little bit faster. You have to watch the gun distance and everything as you do with most low VLC products, but as a general guideline, the same thing happens. You want the base coat to actually flash out so that it'll have an opportunity to orient the metallics properly to achieve the right color and to level out and adhere well and provide a perfect surface for the clear coat to go on. The speed and the leveling of the clear coats is the same kind of an issue. If it's too fast, we're likely to get more orange peel, maybe solvent popping, dieback, stuff like that, associated with excessive film build. If it's too slow, we're going to waste time, we're going to have extended dry times, we're going to have running maybe and difficult handling. So we want to do the same thing. We want to pick the hardener that's going to give us the flash time that's going to be appropriate for the job size and the temperature. So with that in mind, there's four different hardeners for most clear coats, and we go from the 43, which is appropriate for a small job, cool weather, where we're only going to be spraying for a couple of minutes maybe. And then a larger job on an overall where we might actually be spraying for a, a total of 10 minutes or something, we're going to need it to stay open and level longer even to absorb our own overspray. So there's four hardeners for most clear coats, but then what about some of the clear coats that only have one hardener? Well, that's a different topic. With some of them like the MS-15 and the MSV-25, they only have one activator. They are going to be less adjustable. However, they are labeled as speed clears. So they're going to be most appropriate for one or two panels, sometimes cooler temperatures, and they can exist with their one hardener because that's where they're most appropriate. So as far as product selection goes, you want to pick the clear that's going to be appropriate for the job. Then you want to pick the hardener that's going to give you the appropriate behavior for that job. Again, we want the flash time to happen, we want the material to flow, we want to let the solvents and the clear do the work of leveling and creating that shine that we love. 
Sometimes it can't be helped. Sometimes it's just so cold that it's actually going to affect the curing of a urethane product. In that case, there's two accelerators available, the MX081 and the MX084. There are two different accelerators that kind of do the same thing. The MX081 is just a straightforward accelerator. It can be very helpful in reducing the times a little bit at a lower temperature, but more importantly, it helps the proper curing of a 2K product at a low temperature. The MX084 is another story. It will accelerate the curing of it, but it also has a pot life extender to keep it from going off in the spray gun. So both of those accelerators are available and they do help with the curing of it. But again, if these things are relied on to save time in an effort to get more work done, they're not always helpful because the painter has to apply the material heavier to make up for the undesirable spraying characteristics then guess what? You got a thicker film on there and it's going to take longer to dry overall, have not as good appearance, it's going to take longer to buff, it's going to remain soft, and it can actually be a downfall. So like with the base coats, the clear coat hardener selection, the clear coat selection itself, and even the use of an additive to accelerate drying are all very balanced and you want the material to behave well, to be easy to spray, and that's going to get you the best performance. Well, I hope you picked up a couple of tips from this. The key takeaway is let the product do the work. If you have the right reducer selection, you have the right hardener selection for the job size and the temperature range, spraying should be easy and fun. You shouldn't have to work to get base coat to level out or to get the metallic right. It should want to do it itself. Clear coats, they should want to flow. They should want to go right behind you and stay wet a little bit after you leave and let the solvent do the work. We have the proper selection. It's up to you to make the right choices and hope you enjoy spraying. Thanks for listening. As always, if you want more information on any of this stuff, you can go to matrixsystem.com and you can actually download all the tech sheets for the products there. You can also call your local rep. Thanks for visiting.